Okie dokie, what's happening dudes and dudettes? Welcome back to the channel, we're checking out the Ferrum Forge Stinger today. But first, if you're not subscribed and you're watching the video, go ahead and push the button. And also follow me on Instagram at duties underscore daggers, that way you're all up to date on channel news and info, and you get to see some cool photos. So, um, it's the Ferrum Forge Stinger. Uh, a lot of you might be familiar with Ferrum Forge. They uh, are traditionally a custom knife maker and designer. Um, very, very cool, very, very pricey knives. Um, but they also have some more budget-friendly options, which are designed by Ferrum Forge, uh, the people there at Ferrum Forge, but they are made uh, overseas. So the prices are, um, uh, you know, much more affordable. Uh, but you still get that, um, you know, Ferrum Forge look, and the fit and finish on these guys is uh, quite good. There's a lot of interesting um, details on this knife that you might not notice right off the bat, but uh, you know, um, when you put them all together, it kind of um, equals a, a very cool, well done knife. So uh, let's do some specifications first of all. Actually, you know what? Before that, um, I don't know if you can notice, but my voice is very crisp and clear. I recently just figured out how to hook up my microphone to my phone, so I'm not using this crappy um, little mic anymore. I'm using actually a blue snowball going right into my iPhone. So um, yeah, we're gonna you know we're moving up in the world here. We have better quality audio. Uh, let's do some specs. Uh, we have an overall length. Where's my ruler? There it is. We have an overall length of seven and a quarter inches blade length three and an eighth cutting edge two and seven eighths ish and then we have a closed length of almost exactly four inches um the um blade stock thickness is 0.94 inches um pretty thin uh, it does get extremely thin down at the edge. The blade steel on this guy is Nitro V, which I think um, is a good choice for this knife. Um, the weight is 2.5 ounces, and um, we have G10 uh, scales here. We have stainless steel liners. We have a deep carry pocket clip, two means of deployment, a flipper tab, and a fuller here for the reverse flick. Um, I can only reverse flick with my left hand right now because I um, cut myself right under my fingernail at work and it is quite painful when I put pressure on it so I am unable to reverse flick with my right hand at the moment. Let's do some size comparisons. This is, um, I wouldn't call it, a, it's definitely not, not a large knife. I would call it probably a medium sized knife. Um, even in the choke back position I can get a full four finger grip. But in the choked up position, um, it is extremely comfortable and, and pretty roomy, actually. Um, but it is a pretty thin knife. Um, this thing, um, to me, is not really a hard use knife. It's more of a, you know, very slicey, very pointy, um, very kind of, kind of just quick and nimble kind of uh, EDC knife, which is really, really awesome. We'll talk more about the, um, you know, the blade here in a sec. It is very thin, very pointy, very sharp. Uh, size comparisons. Let's um, let's throw it up against the Mini Archbishop, which is kind of its little bro. I will be reviewing this knife next. I thought about reviewing both of them together, but um, you know, I don't have a ton of knives for content, so I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. How about some Civivi button locks, the Civivi Conspirator, and the Civivi Altus. The Altus is actually a pretty comparable knife in size. In overall aesthetic, um, I was thinking this might be a good comparison video to, to uh, you know, kind of compare these two, because they are actually pretty similar. I might do that uh, coming up. Benchmade Griptilian and the Benchmade Bugout. It's even a little smaller than the Bugout, not by a whole lot, but by a bit. And then let's do the Rat Two. It's actually slightly longer than the Rat 2, but pretty comparable. 
and then spider coat PM2. So you can see it's a pretty thin, um, medium sized knife. Let's talk about the blade here. So like I said, Nitro V, um, it is a flat grind that comes to a very, very thin edge. This thing is slicier than crap, I'm telling you. Um, it is stone washed. It's got a pretty nice stone washing. Not the best I've ever seen, but it looks good. Um, it almost looks a little like a bead blast, but it is in fact a stone washing. You can see the little spots where the medium uh, you know, where it was uh, in the rock tumbler. Um, it's a really, it, it, I really like the blade shape. Um, it really does kind of remind me of a stinger, you know? It's um, it's a drop point, um, but it just kind of reminds me of a stinger, really. You know, it's, uh, it's thin, very pointy. Um, it gets really thin down here at the point, you can see. Um, it's just, uh, it's really cool. I really like that you can choke up and get really nice and close to the edge. We have some jimping here. It's not really the grippiest jimping ever. In fact, it's kind of really not grippy at all. Um, but that's okay. It's not a really hard use knife, so I don't think that's super necessary. Um, but man, in this choked up position, you feel so in control of the knife. Um, you know, I feel like this would be a good whittling knife, or you know, any time where you need to, you know, have a lot of control of the blade and you know, do some really fine cutting tasks. So I really like the blade. <clears throat> the handle is a fairly um, neutral shape. We do have a little cutout here, but that works just fine for me. Um, choked back, my pointer finger rests in there, and choked up, my middle finger rests right in there perfectly. I don't feel like I'm being squeezed into that specific notch, although my finger does kind of just naturally fall in there. Um, and then the rest of the handle is just kind of, you know, um, you know, neutral, and then it comes down to a little point here. Um, so ergonomically, I would say pretty darn comfortable. Um, since it's a pretty thin knife, it doesn't really fill out your hand super well, uh, but it does feel really comfortable and um, definitely locked in. The pocket clip, uh, d I don't really feel it too much, maybe a little bit. But it's definitely not a hot spot. It's not poking me. I really like the clip on this knife. Um, it's small, which I like. I, I think a lot of times knife makers put clips that are way too big on their knives. Um, they, they don't need to be big. Uh, they really just need to be this big. Or honestly, they could be even smaller, but I don't think I would want to go much smaller than this. Um, it is inset with, uh, with one screw holding it in. Um, it is not reversible, however. So it is only right-handed... Uh, tip up carry, but it is a good clip. Let's get out the old car hearts and see how it goes in and out. Um, I've been carrying this at work, and you know, I wear my car hearts at work, and I was having no problem taking this in and out of the pocket, um, which is a little bit surprising since it's so small, but it actually goes in quite well. Check that out. Very deep carry, you only have a small little tip poking out there. Um, so really no problem going in and out of the car hearts. If it goes in and out of these pants, it should go in and out of almost any pants just fine. Um, so the, we have some shadow boxing going on here. The G10 is sitting on top of the liners, but it's a little bit smaller than the liners. So you see the edge of the liners kind of, um, you know, exposed. And I think that's a really cool look. I think it also actually, uh, provides some ergonomic um, benefits because it's almost like it's it's uh, rounded here since you know you have the G10 and then there's um, a little space here before your hand feels the liner so I think it actually helps with ergonomics a bit too plus it's just a, a cool look we have two body screws that are, are have flat heads they're completely flush with the G10 that's great I really like the Ferrum Forge um, logo on the pivot there it is a captive pivot, so when you're tightening or loosening from this side, you're not going to be spinning here since it's a triangular. Um, it's just a really cool look. I really like the kind of cleanness of the handle. Two body screws, flush, and then a, uh, a good looking pivot there. I think it looks great. Same on the other side, except you have the Torx head, um, two body screws, and then the pocket clip screw. So. Um, the handle, I think it looks great. It's ergonomic. 
Um, it's just it's a it's a, just a slim kind of a sexy design. Um, let's talk about the action. The action on this knife and the mini archbishop is very good. Um, the detent is, in my opinion, tuned perfectly for both the flipper tab and the reverse flicking. This thing is very snappy. I mean, you almost can't even see the blade, you know, in, in the semi-open position. It's almost like you push the flipper tab and it's just automatically open. Um, that's how quick it pops out. Um, the reverse flick, even more so. Check this out. I mean, it's it's awesome. <laughs> it's very, very fun to reverse flick. Um, I can do it better with my right hand, but can't do that right now. Um, the fuller's pretty wide, so I'm not I'm never really fumbling with it, trying to get my finger in there. Um, oops. Um, it's easy to find that with your finger to go ahead and reverse flick it. It pops out with just such authority. Um, these things are really fun to mess around with. The flipper tab is kind of um, uh, curved down a bit, um, and in the open position, that just provides a little more comfortability um, for this finger choil here. It's more of a rounded area for your finger to go. Um, I really only push button this flipper tab. I think that's probably the, the best way to do it. You can light switch it too, um, but for me, it's almost like a button. You're, you're pushing down on this little button and the blade just pops right out. So action, very good. It's not fall shut. Give it a couple shakes and it will fall shut. Um, you know, honestly, I don't really see the point in a knife having bearings if it's not going to fall shut. I almost wish this knife would just have um, be running on phosphor bronze washers. That way I wouldn't worry so much carrying it at work, um, getting these bearings all gunked up. Uh, I kind of wish that this was phosphor bronze washers. Um, you know, I, I don't really see a huge benefit in having washers, or, in, or sorry, in having bearings. Um, you know, it's not falling shut. Um, I think having the phosphor bronze in here would not affect the opening action at all. I think it would be just as snappy with phosphor bronze washers. And I think, um, you know, like I said, it's not falling shut anyways. So might as well just put phosphor bronze washers in there. That's just my opinion though. Um, you know, some people prefer bearings, that's totally fine. Um, this is this is a fun knife to just mess around with. It's not like, it's not fidgety in the sense that you can open and close it really fast and smoothly, but man, just the snappiness of it opening is just really fun to do. I can even do it with my pointer finger sometimes, let's see. Yeah, I can re reverse flick with my pointer finger. Um, yeah, this thing's cool. So a um, couple little details that I noticed. Um, this plunge line is actually curved, and it's curved in kind of an interesting uh, radius. It's not like a complete half circle here. You can see it curves, and then you know uh, it's hidden by the or ground off by the when they milled in the fuller. But then you can see the end of it right there. Let me get something I can point with here. See that? Let me see if I can get the light right. See that little line right there? That's the plunge line, you know, coming all the way over here and then ending, it actually ends over here, which is pretty interesting. Let me see if you can see it better around this side. Yeah, you can see it right there. So I'm not sure um, how they achieve that. I'm really not sure how, the, how someone achieves a, a kind of radius uh, plunge line. Usually, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're putting in your bevel on a belt sander. The belt sander is usually around this thick and it's running up and down this way and you're holding the knife up like this to, you know, at a little angle to um, grind in your bubbles. So, you know, this line here um, is basically, you know, coming up against, you know, you're stopping it here where you want your plunge line to be and this is a straight line. It's not curved. Um, even if you were doing it um, well, you know what, maybe they might, maybe they did it on one of, you know, those big disc, uh, sanders, uh, that spins this way. Maybe they were holding it at the edge of that, but that wouldn't really explain why it's such kind of an odd radius. I'm really not sure. 
how they did that. But I think it's cool. It's a cool touch. You know, most knives have a, um, a, a straight plunge line. You can see this one here ends there. It's a straight line. Um, you know, almost all of my knives have that. Well, this one's a little angled, but it is a straight line. Um, so that's kind of a, a cool touch, angled, but it is a straight line. Um, if anyone knows how that is achieved, let me know, because I would love to, to try to do this maybe on one of my knives. I'm sure it's probably harder than just making it a straight line, but it gives it a cool look. I really like it. So that's just kind of a, an interesting little detail um, that I noticed. Um, you can tell that this knife, um, you know, uh, whoever designed it or whatever group of people designed it really paid attention to the little details. You know, the shadow boxing, the, um, the flush flathead, flat-headed screws, the plunge line, um, you know, the, uh, the flipper tab, how it's shaped and, you know, when it gets in the open position is perfect for, you know, being choked up. Um, you know, the pivot, the, um, the uh, pocket clip that works very well. Um, it's just a well put together knife. Um, and I, I really have been enjoying it much, much. I really have been enjoying it much. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, that's about it, folks. Um, that's the Ferrum Forge Stinger. Oh, yeah, this knife is, um, it's, depending on where you find it, it's like between 75 and 90 bucks. Um, I got it in a trade. Uh, I think for the most part, it's 90 bucks. Um, Honestly, I think that is a little pricey for this knife. I would think this would be more in like the $70, $70 range. Um, but it's, I don't think it's a, a bad purchase either. Um, I really appreciate the attention to detail that went into it. Really appreciate the snappy action, the really great choke up position, the very thin grind. Um, this is a great knife. It, it really is a stinger and, um, you know, it, Especially paired with the mini archbishop man. Look at how good they look together That is just a freaking awesome pair man So that'll do it uh, stay tuned in the next day or two for the review on the mini archbishop and um, Thanks for watching see you in the next one